Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy Shayness. Um, and I know a lot of you guys were expecting this video last week. Um, last week I actually took a mini vacation, so forgive me for the lack of updates. I just kind of needed some time to myself to kind of recover. Uh, but you know what? We're jumping straight back into our normal routine. Uh, so this is a video that you guys wanted. Um, what I think of all the mods that I've done to the car thus far a whole year later. So let's just dive straight into that. So going in order, uh, all of the LED bulbs. I do highly like the aspect of having your car look as clean as possible. I know they are a little costly as opposed to just keeping your stock bulbs in there. So for those of you guys trying to get rid of that orange tint in both sets of lights, um, I would highly recommend them. One, they are brighter. Uh, they are a darker orange as opposed to the normal bulb that's already in there. Um, and when the car is off or when the turn signals aren't on, um, it just looks clean, it looks nice and clear. Um, it just makes your car look that much cleaner. So um, I highly recommend it. I love them, they're functional. And it's a very cheap way to just basically give your car that little extra to set it apart from everybody else. With that being said, the next thing that we added was mud flaps. Um, and to be honest, I, I love them. They were a nice gift from Subi Lu. Um, very appreciative of it. Um, they just kind of make the car look uh, aftermarket I suppose you know you see a lot of Velocitors down the street uh, but yours rocking the mud flaps does make it look a little bit more like it has a presence so it lets you know hey there's something different about this car um, yeah it definitely like yells out look at me um, so I, I do like them I really do I think it sets off the car unfortunately obviously the car's not all-wheel drive so it's not gonna be doing any kind of rallying anytime soon uh, but it definitely gives it that nice little presence factor to it. Jumping straight into that, the uh, window visors. Um, I actually do like them, they're pretty functional. Like I mentioned in that video, um, one of the reasons why I bought them originally was because sometimes when it does rain here, um, I like to get natural air in there, so it lets you uh, roll down your windows just a slight bit, um, even if it's raining outside. Um, and it does kind of also block the sunlight from you a little bit without having to use the sunshade or the sun block or whatever it's called. Um, and it also allows you to have your windows down um, instead of having them rolled up uh, to use a tinted portion uh, because it is darker obviously. So you don't have to have your windows up. Uh, you can roll them down and it kind of helps block the sunlight from the side. And actually real quick, speaking of price, again, I know I made this in the video, but for those of you that are interested in window visors, um, I wouldn't spend any more than 40 bucks for them. Um, I know there's companies out there like WeatherTech that make some that are quite costly, and some people uh, with their own storefronts are actually selling them for a costly price. Um, I won't lie to you guys, I found the exact same ones that everybody sells, the uh, KDM brand um, on eBay for, when I originally got them, they were like 35 bucks. Uh, they range about 35 to 40 dollars um, that includes shipping so if you guys are paying any more than 50 dollars for them um, i feel personally that you're getting ripped off um, keep in mind it will take a little longer so if you need them instantly then it might be best to get it through one of the other vendors that i mentioned you will be paying a premium for that though so just keep that in mind the last thing to finish off all of the cosmetic mods are the front and rear tow hook and the amber deletes um, again, the front and rear tow hook are just little ways of styling your car to kind of make it stand out a bit, much like the mud flaps. But it makes it definitely feel like, whoa, there's something different about this car. The Amber Deletes, um, as obviously they've been one of the most popular videos I've had and one of the most popular mods that I've done to this car. Very simple, very cheap. Um, and for those of you that don't like having that orange like I was kind of paranoid about, especially on black, um, it's a nice way to get rid of it. Uh, for those of you that have white cars, um, they do make them in white as well. So if you want to kind of have it blend in with your uh, paint, uh, that's definitely a go. Um, especially for those of you who can't currently dish out money for getting KDM lights with the clear corners or would just like to get that portion covered off in general. The black blends in very well with every other color, including the white one. So um, it's just personal preference, but honestly, that's usually what they go for uh, because black's kind of the most universal one and it would be very hard to color match uh, every particular shade of color, especially when you're talking about some of the matte models. So just kind of keep that in mind, but it's uh, a great product for the price. Uh, it definitely adds a little bit of style. I love it. So moving on to the stuff that you actually care about, the blow-off valve. What do I think? I feel like I've said this a million times in numerous videos. Um, the one that I got for the price, um, you can't beat it. Um, I will kind of give you a few pros and cons. Um, it's a great mod. Uh, it definitely does help hold boost a little better than the uh, rubber flange one that comes on there. Um, and obviously it gives you that cool sound. Keep in mind things that I noticed are that once I had it installed, it does consume fuel a little bit more. Whether that's to do with the fact that now um, there's a good amount of boost coming in solid and it has to dump more fuel, um, whether that's because some of you are gonna have a heavy foot, 
um, or even some of you guys just constantly trying to hear that sound over and over again. So just keep that in mind. The biggest thing I did experience after installing that is uh, a dip in fuel mileage. Nothing too drastic, but it was noticeable enough, um, especially for me who I drive very conservatively. So um, yeah, take it for what it's worth. It's a good uh, factor for performance. Uh, but there's that trade-off. The next one is the exhaust. I get asked a lot of questions. I feel exhaust in any circle when it comes to the car scene, it's gonna be one of those mods that's high up on the list, mainly because one, you wanna hear the sound of your exhaust. Two, it obviously removes restriction from your exhaust stream, um, and that's even including if you leave the cats on. Uh, but it just, it sounds good. It does give you a bump in power. Um, it's kind of beneficial all the way around. It's that perfect, compromise of sound uh, but not being too loud um, and at times I won't lie the one that I have the Gretty model um, I wish it were louder uh, but then I go on long trips and I just completely love it because it doesn't drone it doesn't give you any kind of vibrations it's actually kind of a perfect product um, again it's a little on the pricier side so if you guys go with other brands that's not a problem uh, but yeah, um, an exhaust system is obviously going to be on the top of the list of many people. Uh, whether you're trying to get attention or not, it's just kind of up there. Personally, the choice is up to you, uh, but I'm pretty sure most of you guys are going to agree with me and say that yeah, an exhaust system is definitely something to get. The next one, uh, the airbox delete or just installing an actual intake system. Um, I've read in the forums a lot and from a lot of people that some people don't like the excess sound because you do hear it suctioning up the air from the turbo. Um, it does make your engine a little more audible. So realistically, that's gonna be up to you. If you're putting an exhaust system, chances are you're probably not gonna care about an intake system. But I have seen people that put an aftermarket exhaust and complain about the intake system. It's only beneficial. It's obviously gonna give you a few extra ponies um, and it just helps the engine breathe better. Um, definitely with the intake you will notice a difference in fuel consumption just because one it's less restrictive obviously but two the stock airbox has that little door on the inside that's held magnetically um, and obviously it would open and close depending on how much boost you're requiring so um, take that for what it is you are going to notice a dip in fuel economy um, just because you're going to be at a constant airstream that's less restricted um, but it just feels like the car performs better overall around with it um, again normally that's one of those mods that's high up on the list for most people um, I think it was worth the price again there's more affordable alternatives than the one that I made um, and even if you're just going with that little makeshift uh, airbox delete that I made the first time around um, you'll notice something there that one actually was a lot louder because of that piping um, the intake is actually quieter than that um, just because it's better made I suppose uh, but yeah just kind of keep that in mind um, if I recommend any of these and as you can see the trend I'm, I recommend most of the mods that I did to the car uh, I'm actually really happy with it but um, like I said the cons are fuel economy you kind of lose a little bit of mileage so yeah the last of the uh, performance mods that are currently on the car right now would be the catch can um, I highly recommend a catch can to anybody. Um, for those of you who haven't done your research and haven't gone into forums, GDI engines or gasoline direct injection, direct gasoline injection, direct injection, whatever, there's numerous ways of saying that particular type of engine. Um, but any particular vehicle that has the fuel directly injected into the cylinder, not a traditional fuel rail like back in the days, um, I highly recommend an oil catch can. The reason being is fuel no longer comes in and does not clean the valves anymore like it used to. Uh, the fuel is just, obviously like it states, directly injected into the cylinder uh, where it combusts. So it doesn't stay in a fluid state for very long, enough to clean any of the engine cylinder walls or the valves or any of that stuff. Um, so an oil catch can is basically just an extra filter in line to help you out. Um, it can only benefit you honestly and some of the more aggressive builds out there use dual catch cans um, They almost all use a catch can uh, an oil catch can even if it's an eBay one 20 bucks if you splurge like I did um, Just get it. It's only gonna benefit you one way or another So lastly the last thing that I saved were the uh, the little screen protector on the media player um, It was 10 bucks. I think it was 10 bucks well spent one thing that I've discovered uh, since I made that video is that it does get uh, fingerprints on there. But the coolest difference is that as opposed to having your fingerprints on the regular screen, when the regular screen turns on, if you don't have that film um, and you have your fingerprints on the screen, you can actually see them with the screen lit up. 
The nice thing about the foam protectant is that once the screen is on, um, you don't see those fingerprints. Even though they are on that screen protector, when you turn it off, you can easily notice it. Uh, when the media player is on, um, those fingerprints actually don't show up at all. So even though it's kind of contradictory in the whole no fingerprints, um, it kind of does what it said it would do. Um, the fingerprints are there, you just don't see them when the media player is on. So for that alone, um, I highly suggest it. Um, sometimes it will require you to press things a little harder, but again, for 10 bucks, um, I think it's well worth it. Next, uh, talking about bulbs, uh, the main things, you know, your DRLs slash high beams, your low beam lights, and your fog lights. I highly recommend you upgrade all of those just because it's visibility sake. Um, and it's also kind of a style factor, especially if you're talking about your uh, high beams. Uh, the high beam halogen, if you use them for DRLs, they're kind of nasty. I know a lot of you people just put uh, LED bulbs to get that crisp white and you sacrifice your uh, high beams. If you can and if you can afford it, I would go with a legitimate LED headlight kit instead. Something like one of these, um, because basically these will output a full high beam and because of the LED um, receiving the lower voltage, it'll still give you that nice white. It'll still illuminate at a lower output to be your DRL, but then when you want it to be a high beam, it'll basically amplify. So they look something like this. Um, I highly suggest getting a kit like that um, if you're gonna be serious about having that nice crisp white DRL, but still being able to use your high beams. Um, that's kind of top of mind that I would highly suggest and recommend. The next one is, I know everybody uses HIDs for your headlights, and while that definitely is a solution to the problem, um, I might say against it, just because eventually the HID will burn out the reflectors within, just because of the high output. So uh, for now, unfortunately, I don't have an LED replacement for that. I'm gonna test out those uh, new Sabre Pros uh, that I showed you guys a while back from DDM Tuning. Uh, they're claimed to be 10,000 lumens, so um, as long as I get the same outreach as the stock halogen or a little more, and a more crisp, clear whiteness, they'll basically do what I wanted to do. Uh, but one thing that I did get uh, right off the bat was those Sylvania Silver Star Ultra Bulbs. Um, and by all means, again, unfortunately, the video doesn't quite capture it well, but it's a great solution to the problem and at a fraction of the price. I understand that they're halogens, but one, it's not gonna burn out the uh, inner reflectors. Um, and it is wider, it is brighter, it is further in reach. Um, it does everything it advertises it'll do. Um, again, it's a halogen, so it's only gonna give you so much. Um, and it does still eventually, compared to LEDs um, or HIDs, have kind of a slight yellowish tint but it's a better product all around and it's and at the end of the day, it's all about visibility. Um, next up is the uh, fog light LEDs that I used. Um, obviously you guys can go with any kind of LED for your fog lights, any color and whatnot. Um, you can even do RGB uh, setups where it'll change colors um, if you're trying to do some kind of show stuff. Um, I like these ones that I got mainly because they are a bright white, uh, which is great during the day. And then they're switchbacks, so the moment I turn them off and on again, uh, they give you that nice yellow. It is not a super hyper yellow like uh, some of the JDM bulbs or the HID bulbs. Um, it is, I won't lie, kind of a dullish yellow, but in fog, it actually works. Um, recently, I got a chance to use it when it was really foggy here at nighttime, um, and you could see it perfectly on the road. You could see it perfectly extend to the sides. Um, it functions properly. Um, so when you're looking at it directly, it may not give you the most style points, uh, but when it comes to actual driving, um, it works the way it's supposed to. And to be honest, for style, I would use white anyways. All right guys, and last but certainly not least, the dash cam. Um, recently I upgraded to a slightly better one. Um, most of them will be of this quality now if you uh, look on Amazon or eBay or whatnot. This one's honestly basically your guys' call. I highly recommend having a dash cam just in case of like emergencies or possible accidents just to kind of prove your point. You know, forbid you guys be involved in something like that. It's always nice to have a third set of eyes or a second set of eyes kind of keeping watch for you guys and helping you back up your story. Um, one thing is that when you buy these, um, you wanna have, um, you probably already have probably numerous of these, but if you don't, you wanna make sure you buy a uh, mini SD card because it does not come included with many of these kits. Uh, so you're gonna need that, at least 32 gigs or higher. The other thing is it does come with its own little mini charger. Um, however, it's only one USB port. 
So for those of you guys that want an extra USB port for something like charging your phone like I do, um, I suggest buying a, an extra aftermarket one. This one in particular I really liked because it's actually smaller than the one that came in the box of the dash cam. It has dual USB ports, but the cool thing about this one um, is that this one has the sockets glow uh, blue um, at all times while it's plugged in. So in the dark, um, it actually sits nice with the uh, where the auxiliary and the USB port are. They glow up blue, you know, the letters. Um, this sits next to it, glowing blue, letting you know that that empty socket's there. And it's not overly bright, it's not intrusive, it's just, hey, here I am. So that about does it, guys. Um, the short and simple of it is that all of the mods that I've done to the car, obviously, I like. Um, and the last thing is definitely check with your guys' dealership or in your area to make sure that some of these things do not void your warranty. They should not, but I know some of you guys might take it a little bit extreme, like removing cats off of your exhaust system um, or using non-street legal intake systems, um, in California at least. Uh, so just kind of check to see um, and you know definitely check which way you're going with that being said Thanks guys so much for all your support as always. I know I'm constantly ranting about that, but I definitely do appreciate it um, The giveaway it is coming. Um, I'm still waiting on some product that I had ordered um, That I want to include stuff of that in the giveaway uh, So that's the reason why I haven't brought it up and whatnot, but just stay tuned um, Another thing our spec life. Um, I'm actually running short on submissions So please tell your friends even if they don't have a KDM or a Hyundai vehicle uh, you yourself please submit your car even if you think it looks stock uh, believe me I've shared cars of all aspects you know fully modified more stock than you would think uh, so just you know send me your submissions uh, email me at the ask at gmail.com address uh, yeah just send me more pictures so I could share your awesome creations um, but that's about it guys thanks so much I know this video was kind of simple and probably not as spectacular as you thought it would be uh, but you requested it so here it is um, following short um, there's gonna be another video with kind of a behind the scenes uh, of the stuff that I did before and after that one year review uh, so stay tuned for that but thanks guys for all the love and support um, please comment down below anything that you feel that you you know need to let me know whether it's positive what whether it's critical um, I like to read and try to reply to almost everybody uh, so I appreciate the feedback but as always guys keep doing you wishing you the best of luck wishing you an awesome week and I'll see you guys in the next video bye quick little thing I always do something last minute I know because um, someone's gonna ask me about this the little USB drive that I use um, do I recommend this absolutely um, this is sitting here because I actually upgraded to a larger size and a better one but these things are so cool I know most of you guys stream music nowadays and whatnot uh, but man if you guys are old school like me and you store music or you simply have stuff that you probably can't find because it's underground or whatnot um, it's so cool to have a bunch of albums, a bunch of mixes and whatnot at your fingertips in your car whenever you'd like, instead of having to fidget on your phone or try to find something to stream. Um, I love having this in there plugged in at all times uh, because if I don't want to stream something, let's say I want to listen to an album, if it's on that drive, I just go to my list, find it, play it, super cool. So yeah, almost forgot that, but I know somebody would ask me something about it, so there you go.